I'm back. Well, man, where have I been? Well, I've been across the pond, so to speak, over in Dallas and one or two other places as well. But enough about me for now. Let's take a look at this. This has come in from uh, New X, or Nux, as they're sometimes called. And, uh, yeah, it's for review. This review will be all about the new X, Mighty Space. That's what it's called, it's what it says here. Yeah, the Mighty Space. And I can believe that this is going to be pretty loud, I think. Yeah, makes a change, really. And I, I wonder how it compares to that uh, Yamaha THR30 Mark II. Well, we'll come to that. Now, New X sent me this uh, as, a, as a sample, if you will, so that I can review it for you. And hey, listen, this is not a biased review in some way. I don't do them sort of things. You need to go and look at the other channels for all that sort of stuff. Now, before we get much further, I want to just show you a few things that come in the box. First off, you get this thing. This has got a, a mains lead, which would be suitable for your country, wherever it may be. You get one of these, and that, that cable, that stereo cable, can sort of fit in this other stuff you get, like this dual channel pedal included. Yeah, oh, it looks great, doesn't it? You also get uh, like a handle that's going to fit on the unit, which will fit on a bit later. A USB cable, which is nice. And we get the mains adapter that's suitable for your country, so it's all good. But as well as that, and as well as this little pedal, we're all in there for now. What else do you get? Well, you get this thing here. And this is the thing, this is what's important to me. This is what you didn't get with the Yamaha THR 30 Mark II. You actually get the wireless adapter, all raring to go and honky-dory, and uh, I can't say any more about that. So it just really, it beggars belief as to whether the THR30 is a better choice, or the new X, Mighty Space, is a better choice. And right off from the parts that you get with it, well, the new X is ahead. More of that later. Now then, I always come down and take a nice close look at this gear. And this is going to be no exception. I'm going to go and take a look inside. I'm going to show you, in a very unbiased way, exactly what this darn thing's made of. I mean, it does look good, I have to say. It just does. And uh, then we'll come back up. We'll have a run through it. And then we're going to be doing some playing. Yeah. Uh, I think this denotes playing. Yeah. As most of them do. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it, uh, it all looks uh, entirely useful. And by the way, if you catch me coughing at all, it's because I've just crawled back from being ill when I was in Dallas. Oh, I had a week of hell and back. Yeah, a bit like the evil owl, I guess. Who isn't on today? He's gone for a wash. <laughs> so let's get a bit closer and see what I can show you inside the new X, Mighty Space, yeah, from Cherub which is the, uh, the company that makes us stuff. Yeah. Okay, well, here we go. Let's take a look at what's going on inside this hamp. Well, let's say inside, we can only see certain parts of it. But uh, I guess the important bits are what we're looking at now, really. Uh, this is the main board. And you can see there's a sort of... That looks like a, a processor board down there to me. And the, uh, the processor, it seems is an NXP MIMXRT11760 VMAA. More about that later. And you can see there's probably, these are memory, my guess. Now we've also got uh, a few other chips cooking around in here, uh, as well as those two that are used for the memory. We've got, uh, well, we've got a thing over there. You can't see it much, but I'm not really going to go to it. That looks more like a, a voltage converter, that does. Or something like that. I'm not too worried about that. But you've also got uh, other little chips kicking around, like this one down here. You can just about see it there. I could zoom in a bit further, I guess. Let's see if I can. Yeah, you can see it just there. 
just there. And that one looks like a SSM 3582A. What's it do? Well, I don't really know right now, but I guess we'll get to take a look at that a bit later. But not in any hyper depth. The capacitors that are in here all look pretty, uh, pretty average to me. You'll see them kicking around on lots of different things, and there's some, and you'll notice there there's some electrolytics that have been nice and well stuck down to the board and all that sort of thing. Overall, the board is basically what looks to me like a, a surface mount uh, type of board. It's been through a machine. It's really pretty well made, actually, like most things are these days. And you can see the uh, the cables have got this sort of, well, it looks like a sort of uh, insulating type of thing. I'm not sure why that's there, but well, it's not to worry. Let's have a quick look at the other side, see what's going on. Now on the other side, we've got a, a couple of little bits and pieces. We've got some uh, uh, capacitors and things on there. Nothing special there. Once again, what you've got, as you move along the board, you've got a couple of things. You've got this board here at the top, and you've got this board down below it. Now, one of these will be uh, probably Bluetooth, at a guess. They don't tell me any more than they tell you, remember that. And the other one could well be a wireless module. And uh, if we look at this top one, as you can see on the screen now, uh, all the... Uh, Chip numbers have been removed, so we're not easily going to determine what that is. And on the bottom one, well, just looking at it, you might see a number or not, but it doesn't really matter. What does matter is the overall build of this unit and how well it's been put together. It looks pretty good, actually. Anyway, enough of inside. Uh, let's go back out and see what else I can see. Okay, well, here we are. I've uh, put the amp back in its, uh, in its surround. Now, I can't get these speakers out for the love of the money, uh, but not to worry about that. And also, uh, another thing that I wanted to show that I can't actually get out of this is the... Uh, it's actually got a battery in here. So this can be played on a battery, pretty much like the THR2 uh, from Yamaha. And uh, this one uh, does quite a number of hours. Now, let's just talk about a bit of the specifications rather than... Uh, anything else because I can't really get the speakers out sadly I can't I wish I could have by the way this is a 30 watt desktop wireless modeling um, that's what it really is and I don't know whether anybody's ever seen one of these mighty spaces before I certainly haven't and uh, yeah very impressive well when you start looking at it if you start looking at the uh, the stuff that really matters the battery is an 11.1 .1 volt and it's 5,000 milliampere hours. It's got a current draw, again, of 11.1 .1 volts at 220 milliamps. And it lets this thing run uh, for hours on end. And uh, I think they do specify somewhere. Indeed, they do. They actually say that it'll play for seven hours on its 11.1 uh, .1 volt, 5,000 milliampere per hour battery. Which, uh, that says a lot, really. That's a pretty chunky battery in there. And you can charge it up. And once it's charged up, up to seven hours, that's all pretty good. In my book, it probably is in yours as well. And I'm looking at some of the specs. And really, there, there's some very interesting stuff. You've got applications for it and all sorts, which we're going to come to a little bit further down the road. What I want to do is just run down the, the controls on the top and on the back. And then we'll uh, look a bit further. Yeah, start covering some of the specs. And then we'll bring the software up. This is the plan. And uh, take a good look at the software and the rest of it. Okay, well, here we go. I don't think there's anything that's going to be maddeningly difficult to use and uh, to explain on this one. It's all pretty straightforward, really. And that's the way I like it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. No, don't do that, Tony. <laughs> And don't forget we've got this to look at later, which we'll be coming back to. So let's take a run along the top from this side, down here, at uh, some of the controls that are there. Well, you've got the obvious input, and you've got a wireless button there where we can turn the wireless on or off. You can plug it straight in if you want to. Nothing difficult about that. As we look along it, we've got 
an obvious gain knob because that's what it says. Nothing difficult here is that you've got a volume knob. You've got the channel so we can choose the channel of the amp. Yeah, yeah, we'll come back to that. We've got a bass, a middle, a treble, a presence, a reverb and even a master and uh, all that, uh, yeah, it all looks good. Obviously we've got things around the back, we'll get to them in a minute. We've got a power on, so even if I just turn this on now, you'll see that it flashes away a little bit and then locks itself in. And uh, there it is running, yeah. So I'll turn it off for now. Let's go and have a look around the back. There's nothing difficult about any of this. Well, there we go, it all looks simple enough. Here's around the back. This is where you put your, uh, your voltage in from the provided power supply, all very nice. We've got a foot switch sitting along here. That's a channel foot switch jack. So we can use that, uh, that little switch they provide. There's another foot switch there. So we can put another one in. Yeah, it's like that. That's for a drum and loop foot switch, which again, we're gonna come back to a bit later. We've got a USB-C port. And once again, I like to see the USB-C port as opposed to some of these old ports that the likes of people like Roland Corporation keep putting on their gear and uh, I keep thinking to myself the back 10 years or something silly but in this one in the the new X mighty space they've got all the current stuff going on which is something I like to see an auxiliary in and uh, it's controlled there which is also the Bluetooth audio volume pot so you've got a Bluetooth connection and that's where you'll change your volume for that. Moving along a little bit, we've got a speaker out jack in case you want to get your 4x12 on it. <laughs> you might, who knows? Uh, you could, literally. And uh, that'd take it up a bit on the old volume. Uh, it might only be a 30 watt amp. I say only, but you know, it's not a 30 watt tube amp. So it's not going to have quite the same results as, as what a 30 watt tube amp might have. But having said that, if you uh, put the right speakers on it, it'll be very loud. We've got a phones out so we can have the headphones in there. And, and I've got an augs in jack if you want to put your, uh, you know, your phone on it or, uh, dare I say iPod? Are they still around? I think they are. Or your, let's put it this way, your audio source can go in there so you can get some practice done. We've got a serial number there and I don't really care about that much. It's just a serial number. As well as that, we've got all the uh, usual sort of things going on. We've got a name, we've got an address, we've got the CE approvals, the Roche compliance, the FCC. Uh, it doesn't have a UKCA on there because I believe that's been put back a couple of years because the UK government's got no money and they coming for mine. They'll be coming for yours too, so don't worry. You can contribute for free. So that's it along the back and that's it along the top. It's all, well, to be honest, it's so simple. Now just while we're sitting here waiting to continue a little bit further, I just wanted to run through some of the specifications that, uh, that this product's got. It all sounds good. Let me just reel them off for you. I've already said it's a 30 watt desktop wireless modeling amp. It's also uh, what they call TSAC-HD or white box amp modeling algorithm, which offers reasonable, well, reasonably realistic playability and feedback. In fact, the white box stuff was on other NUX or NUX uh, products that I looked at. Checking my, uh, my list below, I'll, I'll, I'll put it in the text. On this one, you can have 512 samples uh, of IR resolution. That's 34 premium built-in IRs and 20 user slots for third-party IRs. It does a lot, doesn't it? For what it is. There are seven presets with active functions. That's presets which toggles active ones sequentially. So, yeah, it's in here somewhere. We'll get to see it. There's a gate, compressor, EFX, amp, IR, EQ, modulation, delay, and reverb effect box. Uh, with a free order, you can put them anywhere you, you really want to in this unit. And like I said, the, uh, the white box algorithm that's inside this for the EFX offers an analog response with a sort of natural sort of uh, tone, if you will. We're going to get to hear it a bit later on, so uh, I'm all into this, yeah.
There's a stereo delay or reverb and effects with gorgeous tone, uh, New X told me. Yeah, well, they would. <laughs> but we'll, we'll have a listen at that a bit later on and we'll decide whether it's got a gorgeous tone. It's all subjective, of course, but uh, yeah, it should be good. You can adjust the patch level, by the way, for every preset as well and things like that. Now, as well as that, believe it or not, there's a drum and loop in here with an additional NMP-2 foot switch controller, which we, we saw the controller earlier. We'll be back to that later. As I said earlier, there's a seven hours playing time, which is uh, it's pretty awesome for what it is. You've got ultra low system latency as well. If you, anybody knows what latency is, or worse than that, if anybody doesn't know what latency is, this one's 1.2 milliseconds, and that's the... Uh, when you're playing sometimes on some of this gear, you'll be able here, you strike the string and then wait and out it comes a little bit later and it can be rather off-putting, but at 1.2 milliseconds uh, of delay, you're not even going to notice it. I'll tell you that right off. Very useful is that. It's intuitive Mighty Amp app and Mighty Editor, which it's got both. Uh, the software's third-party IR loader, so if you want to get the third-party IRs in there, well, it's all there to do. I'm hopefully going to try and cover it on the uh, on the iPad, but if I've got to get my phone out, I will. I don't even like using phones personally, but that's the way it is. And by the way, the size of this thing, it can be misleading a little bit, but uh, basically you've got 363 millimetres wide, 171 this way, front to back and 171 high and it weighs believe it or not four kilos it's, it's actually quite a heavy device and i i think a lot of that's down to those speakers and the uh, the internal battery yeah that's what i think now i have got this set up and i've i've been playing through it for a, a little while and i've got the uh, the app running on the ipad but more about that a little bit later i just want to pin down these uh aspects of processes and one or two other little chips in there and I'm not going to spend long on them just long enough so that you understand what's inside this unit and the sort of idea of what you can get out of it really so we'll start as we mean to continue and that's with the processor the processor as you can see on screen now is an MX RT 1170 crossover microcontroller unit that's what it's called it's Setting speed records at 1 GHz in processing speed. The groundbreaking family combines superior computing power and multiple media capabilities with ease of use and real-time functionality. And make no mistake, it does exactly what it says on the tin. Strangely enough, uh, this chip, like a lot of the ones I've seen in more recent times, it's, a, it's an ARM chip invented by basically the guys from Acorn Computers and taken forward as they went. It's an ARM Cortex-M based device and it's got 6,468 total core marks with Cortex-M7. That's one gigahertz plus Cortex-M4 at 400 megahertz, which is uh, moving along a bit. And it says here, real time low latency response is up to two meg of SRAM, 512K Cortex M7 TCM plus 128. I won't bore you with all of that because I'm going to talk about specs all day, can't I? But basically, it's fast real time response with latency as, as low as 12 nanoseconds uh, on some of this stuff that it does. It's also low power, which is important in a device like this because what you don't want it to do is to go chomping away at those batteries. If you're going to use the batteries, which I suspect a lot of people will. And you don't want it to uh, to vanish in about an half an hour or something. This this works for seven hours. It's got a low dynamic power consumption with integrated DC DC converter inside. I've probably showed it here in passing, but don't worry too much about that. And it's got this low power run mode at twenty four megahertz, which uh, also helps really. It's highly integrated. And it uses advanced multimedia for GUI and enhanced HMI. It's got multiple display and CMOS sensor interfaces. 
and a thing called OpenVG Graphics Accelerator running up to 500 meg. Basically, it's quite a, uh, an interesting device because it's not one of the bottom end devices, I guess. You know, for what you're looking at. And interestingly enough, <laughs> believe this or not, it costs typically $8.02, American dollars that is. And you know, one of the things, if you dig back far enough, you'll find that the, uh, the gigahertz era, as they call it, uh, for these uh, ARM Cortex-Ms, it's only more recent times come in, uh, they used to be a bit slower than that, and I, I think that's uh, quite important. Now next to that processor are a couple of 16 meg times 16 bit synchronous DRAMs or SDRAM. You all have heard the phrase before. It doesn't matter if you don't really know much about RAM. Uh, what's important is that this system uses it. And it's got quite a lot of features. Once again, we could harp on for hours about it. But it is a high speed CMOS synchronous DRAM containing 256 megabits. It's internally configured as four banks of four meg word times 16 DRAM with a syn synchronous interface. All signals are registered on the positive edge of the clock signal or CLK. Now once again, a lot of people might want to know about the uh, the audio codec and I think once again, it's, it's, it's important. Anyway, it's an AK4619. It's 192 kilohertz, four channel audio codec. And this AK4619, it, as I said, it's four channel, 24 bit ADC, that's A to D converter, supports an analog gain amplifier. On the output side, the AK4619's four channel, 32 bit D to A converter, supports single ended analog output. Pairing this AK4619 with one of Many other multi-core DSPs enables processing on both audio and voice as required for modern car audio systems, believe it or not. can be used in lots of uh, different things, including this uh, Mighty Space Amp. Quite an interesting uh, little device, really. Although when you look at it on the PCB, as you can see now, it doesn't look much. <laughs> now, this should be quite an important little section of the amp because it's actually the amplifier. <laughs> Yeah, and believe it or not, it's my old friend, Analog Devices. I don't know whether you can see that, but don't worry. Yeah, Analog Devices, remember them guys that made the shark chips and all that sort of stuff. Well, they make lots of other stuff as well. And one of them is this uh, SSM3582A. What the hell's that, Tony? Well, it's 2 times 31.76 watts digital input, filterless, stereo, class D, Audio amplifiers. You can see it on the screen, it just looks like a chip. Well, that's really what it is. Scarily, this one costs, just while we're on the subject of price of chips, this one costs $6.30, and that's if you're buying a thousand, I think it was. Yeah, I mean, it's got lots of features such as digital input in stereo, high efficiency class D amplifier. That's what it is. It operates from a single 4.5 volt. 216.5 volt supply, so it's got a flexible input for the voltage. It's a state of the art, proprietary, filterless, uh, modulation uh, device, 106.5 decibels, signal to noise ratio. I won't bore you with all that, it's just loads of popless and clickless on an off sequence. That's interesting. There's two times 14.67 watts output at 12 volt supply to 4 ohm loads. Or there's two 14.4 watt outputs at 16 volts uh, supply into 8 ohm loads. And this uh, supply here coming on the input side is 15 volts. But I doubt that really equates to the, uh, the input of the uh, particular bit. Well, it, it could do. Yeah. You, you can have a mono mode also for increased uh, maximum output power. And it can get to 1 times 49.69 watts output, a 16 volt power supply, uh, to 2 ohm loads, believe it or not. <laughs> so that's 50 watts, that's quite, uh, well, it's wild. Now there is a, there's a, there's a little wireless board in this unit, uh, so you can connect the wireless that they supply. Uh, where have I put it? There it is. So you can connect the wireless 
yeah, it's all very nice. We can just sort of turn it on. And there it is. There's the little green light, if you can see that going. I don't think you can. Yeah, all very good. It works too, because I've already tried it. Well, basically, that, uh, that little board is uh, probably the chips are bought in and it's just integrated into the system. But the other, the other thing that it's got, it's got a second board, uh, which is on screen now. And this, this, is like, uh, this is like a Bluetooth module. Think about these Bluetooth modules. There are good ones, bad ones, and indifferent ones. And the indifferent ones are not very good. The average ones, are well, they're average. And the good ones are really pretty good. And uh, the one in there that's in, dressed in blue, which you can see on the screen, basically that's, uh, that's a, a bought-in module that's fitted to the amp and the amp's designed around it. Some of its features support Bluetooth 5, which is important. That's uh, a bit of the later stuff. But it's also compatible with Bluetooth 4.2, uh, Ali 4, 2.1 plus EDR systems. It's a 32-bit RISC processor core up to 240 meg. Now that sort of concludes the, uh, the little section on the chips. I'm not going into the biggest of detail, but there should be enough information there for you to determine that, hey, it's not a bad little device. And providing you can get enough input going to it, you'll certainly get enough output coming out of it. I mean, I've got this set up at the moment and uh, the volume for the guitar is set at something like 10 o'clock. I've got the gain up full because I'm like that. <laughs> but I, I'm just looking at the master uh, where the, the audio, there's some backing tracks. You're going to see all that stuff. It's coming out of this uh, iPad and it goes straight into this unit. And you've got a little volume adjuster for the orgs in for uh, Bluetooth at the back here. So you can adjust it up and down a lot. I, I've got the master up for because I like to have things loud. And uh, it is pretty loud. But what I noticed when I was working on one of the phones earlier, it was like uh, that didn't have the same output power that this has got over Bluetooth. So this was a bit quieter. And it's one of the things you need to consider if you're going to be plugging things in. Suppose you could plug things into the auxiliary, then you don't need the the sort of Bluetooth uh, connectivity in the quite the same way. You might get a lot more power coming out of this thing as well. It's just important. It can be important. So for now, it's all working. It's all there. And I'm going to show you uh, the application. We're going to run through it reasonably quickly. I'm not going to spend all day. And then uh, I'll show you some of these backing tracks and things. And uh, I'm not going to show you the loop because everybody's seen a loop these days, haven't they? There's a drum machine. I'll run you through a few of them. Uh, but it is very interesting. It, it, it's not something that you should ignore if you're going to buy one of these. And I don't really think anybody's showing you this stuff. So that's why I like to do it. And uh, it might be a bit longer video. They usually are from me. But it's worth looking at. And that's why one of the reasons I like uh, New X really is because it generally performs that previous device I looked at, uh, that amplifier replacement, which is basically is a, a direction with them these days. That was very good. But this is very good too, in a different way. And uh, it's got lots of channels and amps and things, and you'll see them. I think there's about seven of them. We'll get to that in the software. So enough of that for now. Let's get down there. I'll show you a bit on the phone, and I'll show you a bit on the, uh, the iPad. And I think of the two, the iPads, for me, the old guy. <laughs> really <laughs> yeah I think that's better I think this one's a little bit and you're fiddling around and it doesn't have the same volume output I guess it might if you did a hardware connection but I haven't tried that yet I'm going to download the software to see if I can uh, get it work properly on an, I an iPad as opposed to my phone phones are alright but when you're doing this sort of stuff it's a little bit more complex than, uh, than you might imagine so I'll be back presently. Hope you like it so far. I think it's, uh, it's pretty nice, this one. But we'll see. It's the sound. It does matter. Everything else matters, of course, and that's why I've covered what I've covered up to now. Yeah. I'm going to enjoy this one. This is going to be fun. Okay, well, we've got the, uh, the amplifier sitting down on the floor. Well, it's not on the bench there. And we've got the iPad. Uh, sitting up here 
and it is connected at the moment so it's all good stuff if you take a look at the screen what you've got is uh, you can see this is the the sort of runway for the effects of all the types that you've got we'll come back to them in a minute so we've got this edit for what's going on we've got a section here for drums for what's going on with the drums which is also interesting then you've got a another section for where you can whip things i'm not going to do the whip today but you get the idea with the whip you can play the drums back and you can record and record and so on and so forth it's all exciting and we've got a bit called other which looks after the uh, the bluetooth settings and like an eq type of thing which i'll show you presently so we've got these sort of artist tracks here we can whip to the backing tracks which are there they are you can lose your own in as well by the way but you've got these artist tracks which also goes off through the amp over there and if i was to just choose one any of them this one will do i suppose and uh play it you should you should hear it now i know it's just coming through the microphone but don't worry about that it's all very interesting again we'll come back to that and you've got this uh this other one for settings uh, you can choose different current amps, USB audio, because you can get this out of this off into uh, a PC or desk and stream it off, it appears. You can reset all presets, uh, showing you what's been found and so on. But let's start off where we mean to proceed in this section here. And it, it's quite involved really, there's quite a lot to, uh, to look at. Now one of the things is... Uh, one of the first things is that you've got your gain, your middle, your treble, master, bass and presence. And they're all there. They're all across the front of the amp, so to speak. And we can just very easily do, as we can on most of these type of products, just twiddle around and away you go. They've got the amp itself here. And here's a number of the amps. It's quite a number of them that you can choose. I think this one was on uh, 800 think it was yeah so you've got choices there you can turn the amp on and off by the way just by touching the screen now there is a uh, editor for pcs and stuff like that but I, i'm just sticking on this one for now it's because it, i've got it set up and i don't really want to spend any longer than i've got to i've been going around in circles on this one for a long time you can see that you've got a number of presets so if i was to move across to this preset you get a different flavour. In this case, it's a Jazz Queen. Preset 2 is an A30. You can see the various effects also changing. You can see that. I hope you can. You can see this one's more focused. And so on and so forth. All very simple. So, when you choose the channel, the preset, channel button down here on the amp these are what you'll get in order or you can turn the others off and you can have it so that you've got just the one or two or three or whatever you fancy you can change the patch level here and i'll show you a bit more about that in a bit and uh yeah all pretty much of a much as i said you've got the list here and you can actually move these around they don't have to be in specific order but uh, moving across let's just choose that one on this one I've chosen the uh, the speaker or the IR and you can see down here in the IR you've got a, a nice selection of them it's quite a lot of them really it's really sort of, and you've got these spaces so you can put your own in I'm not going to bother with any of that today I'm just going to show you what it comes with and I think that's very important to show you what it comes with as opposed to what you might you know try downloading your own and put your own in and assume that the ones that it comes with are no good and i don't think that's the case so we'll uh, stay where we are on that one for now we've got eqs we can change we've looked at some of the eq earlier and we'll no doubt look at it again we've got modulation reverb come all the way back to the beginning you've got a gate compressor delay EFX, there they are, you've got a pile of them that you can add in there, 
In fact, you can do this on almost anything, whether it be delays. Uh, I know the gate. I don't know the gate. No, the gate doesn't let you do it. Of course, it wouldn't. Uh, modulation again. You've got a whole pile of modulation down here. So it's quite involved, really. It's quite a lot of choices that you could make uh, with this amp, really, and store them in the amp. And away you go. So you can have all your favourite sounds. Well, you can have at least seven on uh, that you could choose from uh, the amp or the pedal, which I think is pretty good, really. And you can see up here that once you've done all your bits and pieces, you can save it to wherever you want and so on and so forth. You can also share it if you see that. Again, I'm not spending time on it, but it, it's there to do. So let's move along a bit further to the next item. And we get to the drum bit. You've got some patterns. Here they are. I wouldn't say it's endless, but for each one of these, let's imagine we're on the rock one, we've then got a pile of them down this side. You can see them. Yeah, and you've got some country ones. There they are. And you can just choose whatever you fancy, really. Let's go back. Now, if you want to... Uh, to do something with that, we can adjust the tempo here and all the rest. And yeah, it's all good. Turn her on. There it goes. <laughs> all very simple. Just a simple example. Again, you can spend time doing all this stuff. I'm not going to. You know what a drum machine's like, don't you? Yeah, of course you do. Now, of course you can set the, the tap tempo and all the rest of it. But I want to move along a bit further. We've got the loop. Now most loop machines are well, pretty similar really uh, to a large extent especially on equipment of this sort of calibre. You know it's not going to be endless forever and things like that. <laughs> Some of it is. But on this one we can get the drum machine going or we can do the backing track get that going and we can record here and go around in the loop and off you go. I can increase the loop level, I can do the recording, I can do all the things that you might want to do, but I'm not going to spend any more time showing you the loop. Now next in line, we've got this, uh, this thing here that says Other, and that relates really to the sort of Bluetooth settings. And you can save them, you can reset them, uh, you can turn the speaker on or off, and things like that. Yeah, it's all good. If you look at this, I've got this turned up full because I wanted to get a bit of volume coming out of this uh, iPad, really, uh, into that unit. And it's a sort of two-way street. That's how I'd describe it with this Bluetooth. Uh, but as well as that, you've got all these EQs. We move through the EQs. You can see that I, I sort of bought them up and got rid of a bit of the bass, got rid of a bit of the real top end. It's all there, and I stored them, and that's why they're as they are. You can do what you want with them. You can have a number of EQ groups. This is group one, group two, and group three. It's in group one. Yeah, not much more to say about that, but it can be very useful. And if, if you've got that sort of boomy backing track, or whatever it is that you're working on, you can come in here and uh, fix all that stuff. <laughs> I found it very useful. Now, moving along further, you've got this next section here that's called Jam Track, and I, I always like this sort of stuff. I mean, I go back a long way with Jam Track stuff and messing around on devices, a bit like this. Uh, maybe not as good as this one. Uh, I used to have a, a Roland uh, device and uh, even upgraded that to Revision 10. But eventually, you, you get that you've had enough of it, really. <laughs> but on this one, what I like about this one, you've got, you got your standard backing tracks. And if I just play one, there you go. Let me turn it down a bit. It'll blow my head off. There you go. It's what you'd expect it to be, right? Let me stop that. But you can pull your own backing tracks in, and that's the thing. Uh, that, that could be nice. Uh, you've even got a metal one there. I don't know. Yeah. Bit of funk. So they say? I don't know. 
Yeah, it's all, it's all good fun. I like a bit of blues, don't you? Here we go. Uh, I guess you get that one. <laughs> bit of rock. Yeah. It is what you make it. You've got to remember that. So, you know, there's enough to begin on with and pull your own in and do what you like. But what I like is this other bit here, this artist bit. I thought this was quite nice. Uh, you can just come down here and choose this or choose that. Yeah. So if we, uh, if we start with the first one. There he is. Now don't put up with the tones of what they are here. They're just coming through this... Uh, this microphone and uh, they might not be great don't worry about the tones all I can tell you is it sounds great in the room and uh, I'll probably pull something off and uh, push it through to the desk or something or capture it or whatever so you might get a better idea of the tones later in the video anyway that's the first one you've got you've got a number of these in here they're, they're all okay Yeah. You get the idea. And there's quite a few of them down here. I mean, some of them I didn't quite get. But, yeah, there's a lot of nice ones. There he goes. You could do a lot with that. Yeah. And... To me, they're all, they've all been designed to be played, uh, you know, by guitarists over the top of it, which is really great for practice. That's the main thing. That's what I, I think, anyway. And, and, and the amp's loud enough, if you want it to be, to be able to uh, get your guitar going and off you go, nice and loud. But do bear in mind, like I said earlier on, that if the device you're sending it to the amplifier doesn't have a high output, like this one, this one here, oh look, there's the wife. <laughs> yeah, like that one there. Uh, I couldn't get enough volume from that for what I wanted. Now, what I want isn't necessarily what you want, bear that in mind, boys. And if you push the amp through a, a, a speaker cab, as opposed to the internal speakers, you'll get a bit more volume on the output side. Yeah, things like that. Back to this. You've also got this custom section here. I haven't done anything with that, but no doubt you can pull your own in. Yeah, I think you can do one or two things with this as well. What can we do? Save it, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, whatever. You can see there's lots of various things that you can do, and that, that's the important thing. I'm, it's not really a demonstration of how you use it. It's really just a question of showing you a lot of this stuff that's in here. You know, I think it's quite nice, personally. Moving along further, we've got this settings thing. Not much to see in there. Uh, if we look at current amp, it does support a lot of different things, does this software. You can see that. I think it's quite good, really. Oh, never mind, it's got Harley Benton in there, but that, you know, don't hold it against them, will you? Not my favourite. So, as an overall thing, it's, it's, it's quite nice. Uh, it's simple to use, and uh, it, you can do it from the phone, like I said. I uh, don't see any problems with that. And you can get yourself set up, and, and away you go. It all sounds like a plan. So what I'm going to try and do is to uh, get an output off this with maybe a couple of them backing tracks and just uh, play it, yeah. And you can watch it being played and you'll be able to hear it with a bit of luck. I'll play any old thing over it because uh, I haven't heard them tracks before. <laughs> but don't worry, that doesn't really matter. It should all be interesting. First, we'll uh, go back up and have a quick chat about uh, about this, uh, this device and uh, some of the, the good points, the less good points, if there are any, and things like that, things like the price and the warranty and so on and so forth. Okay, one thing I didn't really talk about was the uh, the little pedal, the little switchable two dual foot switch NMP2. 
Yeah, it's all quite nice. It's metal. Not all that sort of metal. But uh, what's great about it is you get the cable with it, you pull it in, and you can control a lot of things with it. You can switch the drum on and off. You can do the loop on and off. You can do the uh, backing or this or that or the other. So it's all quite nice. Yeah, I like that. It's a nice inclusion. Well, at least I think it is. I've seen that sort of thing on one or two other products, and uh, I think it adds great value, if you want the truth. Okay, well, I haven't showed you this in operation yet, but I will do when we do the, uh, the bit of playing in a short while. Yeah, it all looks quite nice, and uh, it worked when I tested it. Yeah, it worked quite well, actually. You could wander around the studio. I mean, I've got three rooms to go through here. I doubt I'll be wandering around with a camera as well. It's kind of hard to do. <laughs> but it should be interesting. So let's talk warranty on this. Uh, what's the warranty? Well, I think on most of the, the new X stuff, uh, I think it's a one-year warranty, which is, uh, well, it's about average for most people. The sort of area and style of product that it is. Uh, I've had no problems with it at all, really. I plug it in. It works. Off you go. You just need to make sure that your Bluetooth or your wireless or the rest of it's actually set up right. I've got something in my eye. Oh, my God. It's an eyeball. <laughs> yeah. So uh, make sure you get all that right, because if you don't, well, yeah, you might find that uh, when you're playing back, you don't hear any audio. Yeah, that, that can be a bit of a problem. And also, if you plug in your headphones... You may not hear any audio except in the headphones, things like that. Stupid things, really. So the warranty doesn't really concern me that much, but it is a consideration. Some products have longer warranty than that. And uh, I, I guess you get what you pay for to some extent. It's just life, isn't it? So what about price? Well, from what I see looking on the internet, uh, I'm seeing it in the sort of, in the UK that is, about £450, give or take. And when I'm looking at it and it's based overseas, it's looking at an equivalent of about £400, but in dollars. You work your dollars out yourself these days. They're up and down like this. So is the pound. So is everything else, I guess. Now, as if currency does change, of course it could change the price of the product. Uh, so you're just going to be careful with that. But... If you relate it to being, say, £450 in the UK with its uh, its tax and the rest of it, and UK tax is, well, 20%, give or take, it's not a bad device. Yeah, not bad at all. So I think for the money, I think it's quite reasonable. And one of the things that I think uh, is brilliant is that it includes this, this wireless. More about that in a moment. So, what are the things I like, and what are the things I don't like? Well, the first things about it that I like, I'll cover the things I like, because there's probably more of them than there is the things I don't like. Hmm. I do like the fact that you can get an editor for this on a PC, on an Android phone, on an Apple phone, and indeed... <laughs> Even on the uh, the iPad. Yeah, it's all useful, that is. It is for me, at least, and it might be for you. You might be a PC guy, you know. Although, when I looked at the editor, the editor on the PC didn't look quite as good as that one. I couldn't really find the, the info. Yeah, well, what else do I like? I like the fact that it's got seven presets that I can hop to just by hitting a button. That's pretty cool. I like the fact that it's got the reverbs and the, the modulation and all that, all the good stuff built in it. All them things, to me, uh, help to give you a great sound when you're practicing. You know, and it's really, it's a, it's a great practice amp. I wouldn't call it a gigging amp, although you could if you were so inclined. Now, if you noticed earlier, this is another mic. I can't guarantee for you that this is the case, but I'm sort of reading between the lines. You'll notice that at one stage it was talking of up to 50 watts output out of that, uh, that little chip. Yeah. Well, it was at 2 ohms. Now, I can't tell you that you can plug a 2 ohm speaker into that speaker out and you'll get 50 watts out. 
You might. It's in the specs. But can you do it? Well, you know, manufacturer says 30 watts. So you can be pretty sure that you're going to get 30 watts. That's, that's the main thing. And, uh, yeah, I couldn't really tell you more about that. Yeah. But you conclude what you like. I haven't seen anybody else talk about that at all. I like the connections on it too. I like the augs in. Because, you know, if you've got one of these uh, iPods, yeah, you could push it in there. I like the USB. It's a USB-C type. Great. Modern. Great. Fantastic. There's two foot switches uh, here. There's one here for uh, for the foot switch and the other one is for the uh, the drums and the loop. Yeah. But you can sort of get at it if you... Uh, if you just do it like that and you've got one, it's all good that is, it's all good. I like that this is included. Oh yeah, absolutely. More on that in a bit. But I also like, if I don't want to use this, or it's ran flat, or it's this, or it's that, or it's the other, because it can, I can go and take a regular guitar lead, whack it in there, turn the wireless off, and I'm in business. To me, once again, I'm not stuck with X, Y, and Z, that if something goes wrong, like that being flat, I couldn't play. No, I don't want to be in that situation. So that's all good. Yeah, there's plenty to go at as well. Yeah. I think the phone thing, it's also good because a lot of people like to do that. I, I don't particularly, but you know, guys are guys, aren't they? I like the generalised build quality of this as well. I'm always looking inside products because I think it's necessary for people to see what they're actually buying as opposed to what some people will tell you they are and then when you open the unit up, think of that Friedman, uh, JJ amp, JJ Jr. That was awful. This is superior, even though it's a completely different type of product, superior to that Friedman amp that I, that I bought and spent nearly £1,500 on. So to me, that matters, and the warranty matters, and all these other things that I've covered and I continue to cover in every review that I do, I think they all matter. They're all good. I like the approvals on the back, and there's not much more I can say about it, except I like the weight too. That sort of proves to me that it's got a bit of substance inside. Now, whether that's the speakers and or the, uh, the battery is another thing, because... It's, the battery's not little. <laughs> I'll be pretty sure of that. Uh, but overall, yeah, it's all pretty nice. Oh, another thing I liked was all those uh, those backing tracks. Yeah, they're all good and you can push your own in. Listen, I've got a lot of time for that sort of thing because practice makes... Well, it doesn't make perfect, look at me, <laughs> but it does help tremendously uh, by playing to these backing tracks and that sort of stuff. And if you've got a track... Maybe some Santana track, or I don't know, whatever you're into. Uh, and you put your track on, and you spend a bit of time on the, the sort of uh, tab or sheet music. It can, uh, you can gain a lot from that. And, and, and to me, this is a tool to make you better. That's, that's the thing. Well, hey, Tony, what don't you like? Well, there's always going to be something I don't like. <laughs> it's just a fact of life. I don't like that this volume on this can't get as high as the volume on that iPad over there on the input side when you're doing the streaming stuff. Don't like that much. That's a bit of a pain in the neck. Another thing for me was that when I'm using this, the augs in volume, which is the Bluetooth volume, from that to this, I have it on full. Yeah. I have it on full. So, to me, uh, maybe a separate org's in with a cable wouldn't be a nicer choice, really. <laughs> Whatever you say. I don't know. Oh, call me old... No, don't call me old-fashioned, no. <laughs> I've never been a fan of these, either. Uh, no. I mean, there's one in the other room called a camper amp, and uh, I switched mine into a rack, if you want the truth. Because I couldn't stand any more of the amp. And the amp had got one of these things on. And I think it was a... Well, a bit of a letdown in uh, 2011. I think it was. I bought one of them. 
And it's a bit of a letdown now. Uh, what could else could you do? I don't know, but to me, I don't know. It is what it is. Most people get on with it, but not me. It's just Tony. It's a Tony problem. It's not really a a new X mighty space problem. Now then, is there anything else I want to mention? Well, there is. You know, not that long ago, and it will be down in the text below, I, I reviewed a THR 30, I think it was, Mark II. Yeah. And it didn't come with one of these. It didn't come with the wireless. And for the life of me, I was running around trying to find that for the review. And it turned out that theirs had been discontinued because it was overheating or some something like that. Yeah, so the THR30, well, it was a it was a great device. There's no doubt getting away from that. It's well known. It's out there. They sold a lot of them. And I sincerely hope that New X sell a lot of the mighty space too. But this comes with it. The other one didn't. I don't think the price is that far away. Well, it's a little bit away, but Yamaha were asking about £98 for one of these, and this one's got it included. There's not much more you can say about that. If wireless is important to you, that's a better device. You've got better value for money. And I'm not decrying the uh, THR30 in any way, really. It's just that's how it's sold, and that you get your money out. To me... That's a massive uh, reason to buy or consider, at least, at the very least, a new X Mighty Space. It's great value for money. You can't lose that, can you? You can't. Well, I don't think there's that much that I've not covered in this review. I've covered, to be honest, I've covered multitudes of things that people never do talk about. They just plug them in and show it being played and that's it. The thing is, if you only want to see it played and nothing else, you're not interested in the warranty or the price or the, the, the build quality or any of those other things, all those other advantages of this device, then I think uh, you're doing yourself a bit of a disservice there. Because just looking at a product on a computer screen on the internet and assuming that it's all going to be perfect is a big mistake. And it... In my opinion, it's only my opinion, it's equally a big mistake to just watch somebody else playing one of these, doing little else. They're not really showing you the product. It's a pity that. And a lot of the uh, sellers and people that are sort of biased do that all the time. They don't have the time to show you anything properly. This is why my videos are long. Some people love them, some people hate them. A lot of people are okay with watching bits, and you can do that because I always put a list down below in the text where you can hop between different chapters, uh, which I think is always good. Now, hey, listen, you, yeah, you there. <laughs> Hope you subscribed. Do that thumbs up thing. Subscribe. Yeah, and do all the things you should do, really, to help the channel a little bit. Making just this one video has taken me over a week just to make the one video and it's still not complete yet so i put a lot of effort into it whether i'm right in everything or wrong in everything doesn't really matter it's a opinion and it's an unbiased opinion you know uh i always try and do that whether somebody sends me a product that's say i have it with this one or whether i go and buy it i've got right here right now a h90 waiting to be reviewed and that cost me here in the UK a thousand quid so I spend a lot of money on making videos for the benefit of other people and I think that's just a great pastime it's just something that I feel I should do but I always tell the truth and that's why you should consider subscribing I've got a fair number of subscribers so you know they are what they are they, they always seem to be hanging around and waiting for the next video. So I'd appreciate if you do that. Help, helps boost the channel a little bit. You know, it gets harder and harder these days on uh, the likes of uh, YT. Yeah, so thanks for that. And uh, don't forget, will you? <laughs> okay, well, 
What about a Tony score? Yeah. What would I give it? Well, you know, the THR 30 Mark II. I give a pretty good score for that. I think that was a nine. I think I gave it a nine. Been asleep since I did it. So if you want to watch that review, go down and watch it. And then you'll be able to tell me I didn't give it a nine. <laughs> but that's life. But on this one, uh, yeah, it it's an interesting product. It really is. I, I love this being included. That, to me, that saves me a hundred pounds compared to the THR 30 Mark II. The Yamaha device. So I'm going to give this one, I'm going to give it a 10. Because everything's there. It's all included. They've even included things that, well, to be honest, shouldn't be included. They've included everything I can think about. I wish I could have got at the speakers. And I wish I could have seen the, the battery. But don't worry about that. Uh, make no mistake, they're good. They're in there. So it's a 10 out of 10. Yeah, absolutely 10 out of 10. I don't know. Seems uh, seems good. Right, well, on to the playing. And all I'm going to do with the playing is I'm going to do one track with this included. And I'm going to do one track with it not included. So we've got a cable in there. It's probably be more noisy when I've got the cable in. Or, uh, who knows? But that's what's going to happen. There'll be two tracks off the device. I might do a few more or something. I don't know. But whatever comes out, comes out actually off this device with no modifications whatsoever. I'm just going to press the buttons and play. It might be great playing. It might not be great playing. Depends what mood I'm in when I play. Yeah, I'm like that. But uh, yeah, I hope you've liked this review. I, I really wanted to get across uh, everything that I've seen, you know. And uh, yeah, it sounds quite reasonable. And that's the thing for me. Good to touch. Sounds good. And you haven't got to buy anything. <laughs> what more could you ask for? Don't forget, by the way, to visit www.turnimkenzie.com. Uh, it's a website I've had for many, many years, since about 2008, I think. Or maybe earlier than that, 2001. Yeah, it goes back a long way. By the way, I've got a, a link down below uh, to, the, to the New X, uh, Cherub New X website, basically taking you to the mighty space. But if I was you, I'd have a look around while you're there, because they make such a lot of products. They make some really good products. Uh, of which I've also done the odd link down below. So, uh, yeah, do spend the time to go and have a look at the website. You've got nothing to lose. <laughs>